Welcome to the Sunday Morning Message with Pastor Nick Stringer, brought to you from Creekside Church in Brookville, Indiana. Creekside Church, where the Spirit flows. Chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3, we continue our series, Life in Babylon, with message 2 of a four-part series. And today's message is titled, Walking Through Fire. Walking Through Fire. Thomas Hawkes was an Englishman who lived in the mid-16th century. In 1555, Thomas Hawkes was arrested and sentenced for not having his infant child baptized or sprinkled, as you may know it. And they said to Thomas Hawkes, Why are you not following the rules of the church? Everyone gets their infant baptized. He said, Don't you know that your infant is born in original sin? He said, yes. He said, don't you want the original sin washed off? And he said, water can't wash away sin. He said, only through faith in Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus can sin be washed away. And so they called him a heretic. They condemned him. They took him to the stake and they burned him alive. That was in 1555. That's only 500 years ago. Well, the Christians that were enduring that persecution, they were fearful of their own lives. And so Thomas Hawk said to them that while he was at the stake and when he was being burned, he said he would give them a message to let them know that the pain was tolerable. And so as he burned at the stake and his skin was falling off of his bones and his fingers had been completely burned off he raised his hands above his head and he clapped three times and he gave the onlookers the message that God was sparing him from the pain and that had protected him during that situation and praise and glory for Jesus Christ rang out even in the midst of that trying time and that persecution Glory, hallelujah, that God is with us even in the midst of the fire. And so this series, we're talking about living in a culture that is hostile toward God and God's law and God's people. And so what we want to learn today is this, and we're going to learn this through Daniel's friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And we're going to talk about their ordeal and how God was with them biblical principle for today is this faith and fortitude are refined in fire and we will apply this by having faith in God in trust and obedience in him amid great risk that's how faith is refined by having trust and obedience in God at times of great risk you would agree it's easy to be faithful when things are easy But the real test comes when things are difficult, right? So uh, you've got the context there on your sermon note card. I won't repeat that, but I will talk about who is involved in this because we've got a new cast of characters. We've got Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These are friends of Daniel, and they actually have um, been appointed as Daniel's deputies, you might say. They are talented, educated youths who were exiled to Babylon out of Jerusalem. They're strong in their faith in God, and they were promoted to administrators in Babylon. And we also have Nebuchadnezzar. Again, he'll be at the forefront of today's discussion. He reigned over 40 years as king of Babylon. He was a warrior king who um, was very prideful and dominating. Okay, So what's happening here is this. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are in a dangerous situation because of their faith. And God allows us to be in situations like that as well in order to strengthen and to refine our faith. You know, that word refine is a very interesting word. And the biblical illustration for that is gold. And gold is purified by putting it to the fire. And then the dross rises up the dross is the uh, filth that rises up to the top and then the dross is scraped off of that right 
And so faith is the same way. We are put to the fire and we are tried in order to perfect our faith, to make it stronger, to make it more enduring, okay, for Jesus Christ. And so refining is a very interesting word there. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that and how God uses situations in our culture today in order to refine our faith. Now, when we ended last week, we saw that Daniel um, was taken exile into Babylon and he was, uh, had denied to eat the king's food. He stood strong in his faith for God to keep God's dietary laws. Now, since that time, King Nebuchadnezzar has erected a golden image. Okay? Daniel had interpreted a dream that Nebuchadnezzar had. And Nebuchadnezzar's dream was an image that had a head of gold, which represented Babylon, and then other nations made out of different materials to represent different empires that would come after the empire of Babylon. So the head was made of gold, and that represented Nebuchadnezzar's empire in Babylon as the, the current administration. And so Nebuchadnezzar had an entire image that was 90 feet high and 9 feet wide overlaid in gold because he wanted to say, not only am I the head of an empire, but I'm going to be the only empire. So I'm going to make an image that is completely made of gold. And he put out a mandate that said everyone who uh, here's the music. After the music plays, he'll have instrumentation that plays. When they hear that, they are to turn towards the image and they are to bow down and worship the image. So after Daniel had interpreted that dream, uh, Daniel asked the king, he said, can you make Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego my administrators? And so they were made administrators over the province. So that's where we're at right now. Nebuchadnezzar has put up this huge image, 90 feet high, 9 feet wide, overlaid in gold, and he has commanded that everyone at the sound of the instrumentation, the bagpipes, the lyres, trigons, the flutes, everyone is to turn towards that image and to worship that image. So that's where we're at in this passage. Okay, And so 1 Peter 4.12 says this, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal among you which comes upon you for your testing as though some strange thing were happening to you. We are almost certainly guaranteed to face trouble in this life because we are to be tested in our faith. You know, trouble is the default position in this world. Friends, I want to tell you right now, if things are going good in your life, something's wrong. Listen to me. The natural position is not good times. Not in this life, not in this world. The default position is trouble. You know, every time Apple sends an update to our phones, at least on mine anyway, my location services gets turned on. I have to go back in there and turn it off. The default position for location services after an update is on, and I don't like to be tracked. At least that's what I think. Maybe I'm not, but I'm a little paranoid that way. But anyway, I go back and I turn it off. The natural default position for this life is trouble. If things are going good, something's wrong, okay? There's trouble in this world, and we are to have that to refine our faith. And so there's three circumstances that I took out of this passage in Daniel chapter 3 today that God allows us to endure in order to sharpen and to refine our faith. And the first thing you'll see up there is pressure to conform to the culture. Now we talked about this last week and we said that there are many things that are going on in our country now that we are opposed to as Bible believing Christians that we are being told that we need to conform to and that we need to adopt, okay? We see it in the world. We see a church, the American church culture, that is accepting certain things into their church saying, hey, look at us, world. We're not so different from you. And that is not the plan that God has for his church. He wants the church to be set apart as the salt and the light, to stand on biblical principles, not to conform to the world, okay? So 
what we have in you know the natural demeanor of people is to conform to what everybody else is doing there's this thing called the bandwagon effect now this is demonstrated very well uh, in 1962 you guys probably remember the show candid camera and I may have mentioned this before but they did um, an experiment where they conducted they put people on an elevator and had them all turn towards the back of the elevator and then they had unsuspecting people they had the elevator come up open up and everybody was turned towards the back and so a person would step onto the elevator and they'd look around and they'd say why is everybody turned toward and initially they would turn the front and then gradually they would face the back of the elevator as well and so they all conformed to what the people around them were doing and that's what people want to do why because they want they hate confrontation and they want to feel comfortable well the problem with that is is that the world and most people in the world conform to the culture that's not a good thing look what Jesus said in Matthew 7 13 enter through the narrow gate for the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction and there are many who enter through it look many people in the past many people right now and many people in the future are going to choose the path to destruction why because they're not comfortable enough to stand for God it's too hard they don't want people looking at them they don't want people seeing how they really feel to know their faith that is failing the test my friends that is sin that is rejecting God Bible says that if you are ashamed of me I will be ashamed of you it's a test of love right most people will conform to the culture how did our boys do let's take a look at verse 12 here in Daniel chapter 3 it says this there are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the administration of the province of Babylon namely Shadrach Meshach and Abednego these men O king have disregarded you they do not serve your gods or worship the golden image you have set up our boys passed the test now I want to set this scene for you okay let's go back to chapter or verse 7 look what it says Therefore, at that time, when all the peoples heard the sound of the horn, flute, lyre, trigon, psaltery, bagpipe, and all kinds of music, all the peoples, nations, and men of every language fell down and worshipped the golden image Nebuchadnezzar had set up. They heard the music, and they all conformed. They turned towards the image, and they bowed down. Everybody in the land did it they didn't they stood strong what would you do what would you do if I had set up an image what if I put a little statue of Buddha up there and I said we all need to come up here closer to the stage you need to bow down you need to do a chant recognizing this image here and then let's just say that 90% of the people in here did it what would you do would you conform most of the world conforms you know who doesn't conform God's people don't conform to the culture Shadrach Meshach and Abednego did not conform to the culture because they are people of God and you are people of God and you will not conform to the culture but you will stand strong on biblical principles and what God's word has to say why because you love God and God loves you look what it says in Romans chapter 12 verse 2 do not be conformed to this world perhaps I'm not doing it justice and saying it strongly enough do not be conformed to this world this was the Apostle Paul talking to the Christians in Rome do not be conformed to this world not a suggestion but a command do not but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is that which is good 
that which is acceptable and perfect in the eyes of God. Now, why didn't Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego conform? Well, they were people of God, but they also could hear God's word in their ears. Listen to what it says in John 8, 47. He who is of God hears the words of God. He who is of God hears the words of God. In your life, as you're doing your daily task, the word and the message of God should be in your mind and in your ears, directing you and guiding you to all that you do in your life. God's people hear God's word. And I think of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego as everyone else bowed down. Their natural instinct of their flesh may have wanted to conform in order to save their lives but they didn't because the spirit of God kept them strong during that moment and they stood for God and they heard the words of God ringing in their ears the Lord is my shepherd the Lord will provide for me the Lord will give me everything I need the Lord will save me the Lord will spare me the Lord is with me. And God's word was also saying to them, keep my commandments. Don't turn away from me. Be faithful to me. And I will be faithful to you. They were hearing God's words and they were not going to conform to the culture. The pressure of the culture to conform was not going to change them. And that was a test of of love they were willing to look like a fool for God is your love for God that strong are you willing to look foolish for him in front of other people you know Jesus didn't mind looking foolish for you he allowed himself to be bitten his hair pulled out of his beard spit upon a crown of thorns thrust into his head and hanged nearly naked on a cross for you he was not ashamed to look like a fool for you. And that's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The only perfect being that ever lived. That's Jesus Christ. We are filthy sinners in need of salvation and in need of grace. There is nothing of us on ourselves where we can be saved by. You cannot do anything good enough. God cannot look at a list of things that you have done or thought or want to do and say, yeah, you're good enough to get to heaven. You are saved only by your faith in Jesus Christ through the blood that he spilt on the cross. Amen. Thank you. It's a test of love. Would you bow down with the rest of the world or would you stand and take your chances in the furnace of fire? What would you do? That's one way that God will refine our faith. Another way God refines our faith is personal threats to our well-being. We may have to endure personal threats. Let's look at verse 15 in chapter 3. Now, if you are ready, at that moment, this is Nebuchadnezzar talking to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they gather them up, right? They wouldn't bow down before the image. He gathers them up, and he brings them to the furnace of fire, and he gives them another chance. And this is what he says. Now, if you are ready... At the moment you hear the sound of the horn, flute, lyre, trigon, psaltery, and bagpipe, and all kinds of music, to fall down and worship the image that I have made, very well. In other words, he's going to let them go. If you bow down to the image I've made, you're free to go, gentlemen. But if you do not worship, you will immediately be cast into the midst of of a furnace of blazing fire. And what God is there who can deliver you out of my hands? Ooh, a direct challenge by Nebuchadnezzar to the God of all creation. Who can deliver you out of my hands? Can your God deliver you, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? I'll give you one more chance. Here it is. Before you go into the furnace, bow down to my image. Now these boys' livelihood was threatened right they faced the greatest threat threat to personal life right and this this is not anything new all throughout history there has been a hatred toward god and god's people because that's what evil does evil hates god 
Evil hates God's word and evil hates people that love God. And the world hates God and God's people. And I do not like using that word hate, but it's kind of the best one that kind of summarizes what actually is happening. The devil hates the Lord. The devil hates God's people. He sends his demons out to harass. And people are under the influence of evil in our culture today and all around the world. And they have been for many centuries since the beginning of time. And they do evil things and they have evil ideas and thoughts that they impart upon the culture. And they try to get the people to conform because they know that the people will follow. Because that's the natural default position of people is to follow and only people with the spirit of God will have the strength and the wherewithal and the wisdom to know when to stand and not conform to the world the rest will go down the path of destruction because they're not wise why because they don't have the spirit of God why because they don't love the Lord why because they've never trusted Jesus Christ they never acknowledged their need to have Jesus Christ in their lives I'm a sinner. I need salvation. I need help. I want to be in heaven with you, Lord. Help me. Please cleanse me of my sins. Wash them away. 1 John 3.13 says, Do not be surprised, brethren. This is the Apostle John talking to the church. Do not be surprised if the world hates you. John 15, 19, If you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world... I chose you out of the world. Because of this, the world hates you. Look, we all want to be liked, right? We all like to be liked. And I get that, and I understand it. But the natural default position of the world is to go against God, God's people, and Christianity. Folks, listen. The church is in trouble because the church tries to say to the world, Hey, look at us. We're just like you. We do the same kind of things you do. Come join us. That is not what the church is supposed to do. Now, the church is also not to be a bunch of separatists and isolate themselves from the culture. We are to be in this world. We're just not to be of the world. We're to participate in the world. We are to love people. We are to be hospitable and kind. But we are not to conform to the things that the world does. That is not who we are. That is not what God has designed us to be or to do. God wants us to be led by the Spirit and to do good and godly things. Not to blend in. Look, it should not be easy to tell if you're a Christian. It should be easy to tell whether or not you're a Christian. Or it should be easy to see that you're a Christian. Blending in with the world is not an option for born-again believers in Jesus Christ. Going along with the things that the world does. And I don't have to go through a list of what those things are. Because you know in your heart what they are. And you have conviction of those things. But some will choose to do those things anyway because they'll justify them. They'll say that it's okay. They'll say, well, it really doesn't matter. Well, it does matter. And it will matter in your life of faith. You wonder why you don't feel the presence of God in your life at time? Well, it's because you don't walk the line for God. You don't stand up for God. Right? Right? So the world is against God and his people. Listen to this. In Finland, there's a member of parliament. Her name is Pavi Rasan, and I think I pronounced that right. But she's uh, accused right now of a hate crime. You know what her crime was? She tweeted a picture of a Bible verse supporting biblical marriage between one man and one woman. If she's found guilty of this, she will spend two years in prison. This is in Finland. A member of government tweeted on her personal social media account a Bible verse saying God designed marriage for one man and one woman. That is a hate crime she's being accused of. Folks, that's not too far from here, okay? She should be able to do that, and she should not face a penalty for that. That is not a hate crime. That is a good law that God has ordained in his scriptures. Because listen to me, folks. 
I'm going to make it very clear. There is no getting around this. Marriage is between one man and one woman. Nothing else is acceptable. There is no okay except accepting what the culture wants to tell you. And that's the danger we're running into in the church. The church wants to conform because they don't want confrontation and because they're afraid. Look, when I say that kind of stuff, I'm not saying you have to be mad at the people. I'm not saying you have to be mean to people. What I'm saying is, you don't have to conform to their ways. That's all. You are allowed to stand firm in the scripture. You're allowed to stand firm under God. You know, we may not face prison time, or we not, may not have to be uh, forced into a fiery furnace. Boy, I hope not. But you just never know what's happening, do you? But you know what we will face? Maybe our reputation Maybe our character will be slandered. Maybe our character will be assassinated. Maybe we'll be censored, banned, or mocked. You know, if you say blue lives matter, you're a racist. It's not right. Blue lives do matter. All lives matter. You know, I heard some people say that if you didn't get a COVID vaccine, you're like a terrorist. You're a terrorist. Is that right? No, it's not right. There was a Spanish teacher in North Carolina. What she did was she took middle school students. And she said, she asked them about their faith. And then she grouped them according to their faith. And then she began to question them about their opinion on abortion rights and LGBT rights. And according to their answers, if they gave a, an answer that was unsupportive of those issues... She mocked them and made fun of them in her class. North Carolina. A 10-year-old elementary girl wrote um, an essay about Jesus. The essay was a, um, an answer to an open question, who do you look up to? And she looked up to Jesus. And she turned her paper in. And the teacher said, you can't write about Jesus. You need to do this over. That's in the United States of America. You know, one nation under God. This is happening in our culture and this is happening in our country. The world hates God and his people. And folks, we need to pray for God to give us confidence. Let's look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's response to having their lives threatened. I'm in verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to give you an answer concerning this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire. Amen. Amen. And he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. Now here's the key. Verse 18. You're going to want to underline this. Listen to this. But even if he does not, you see, God may not always deliver the way that we want delivered. Even if he does not save us from the fiery furnace, let it be known to you, king, that we are not going to serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. In other words, we are willing to go into the fire for the love of God. And we will never, ever serve your false gods. We will serve the one true and living God, the one who created the universe and everything in it. The one who says, I love you, the one who gave his only begotten son because of the great love that he had for us. That is the God we will serve. We will never serve an image of Buddha. We will never bow down to false religions. We will never serve Allah or Hindu. We will never serve those false gods that they have. We serve the one true and living God. There's one way to God, and it's through Jesus Christ. Amen. There is simply no other way. And that's a, a good thing. That's a comforting thing. Because that limits your choices. <laughs> you have one choice. God or not God. One God. All paths don't lead to heaven. One path leads to heaven. 
and it's through Jesus Christ. So we need to pray for God to give us confidence like he did Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Even if he doesn't. You know, Mercy Me sings that song. Even if you don't, my hope is you alone. Even if you do not save me out of the fire, I'm still willing to go in it for you. You know, they have this great hope of the life that they have. Acts 4.29 says this, And now, Lord, take note of their threats and grant that your bondservants may speak your word with all confidence. You know, confidence not in ourselves, but confidence of what God can do in our lives. So that's a second way that God may try to refine our faith is we may have to endure personal threats to our well-being. And then finally, we may have to endure personal, uh, our personal rights being violated. Okay? Our personal rights violated. Look at verse 23 in chapter 3 there. It says this, But these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell into the midst of the furnace of blazing fire tied up. They were put in there. They were pushed into the fire in the midst of the blazing furnace of fire. Their personal rights were violated. Their basic right to life was violated. Why? Because they wouldn't worship a false god. They wouldn't worship an idol. They worshiped the true God. You see how truth is treated in the natural world? It's treated as foreign and wrong. Lies and deception are treated as good. That is the default position of the world. And some of you are seeing this and you're saying, man, what's going on in our country? That's what's going on in the country. What exactly is supposed to happen? The natural inclination of mankind, sinful mankind, under the curse of sin, is doing what they think is right and what they want to do. Things that are contrary to the Bible. It's all supposed to happen this way. Don't expect it to get better. Look, that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing because that means that Jesus Christ is coming back soon. And that means that you and I are redemption draweth nigh. That's right. You and I have this great hope. Look, if the, if the USA never returns back to the good old days, that's okay for you and me. We have a hope. In Jesus Christ. Our hope is not in USA. Our hope is in Jesus. I love the flag. Where did that flag go? I love that flag. But I understand who is Lord and King. And that is Jesus. Jesus Christ, right? Jesus is Lord. So we can expect maltreatment of Christians because it's inevitable. 2 Timothy 3.12, Indeed, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Look, if you love the Lord, you will be persecuted. All right? In some way, shape, or form, slander, if your faith is known. Now, if you're one of those who say, well, I have a personal relationship. Now, I understand that. Your faith is personal, but that doesn't mean it's secret. Okay? <laughs> it doesn't mean it's, it's a secret. In some way, shape, or form, through the way that you live, the way that you speak, people should know, wow, this is a godly person here. If it's hard to recognize that, I mean, need some work that needs to be done there. Listen, there's an 18-year-old girl in Indiana. Her name was Abby. Abby was recently banned on TikTok, okay? And this is why. She said this, I grew up in a family where we love Jesus and the Bible. I know the subject, so I made TikTok top trends around the Bible and there she is she took a picture of it and it says what she was posting did not conform to the community guidelines what she was putting out there on TikTok did not conform to community guidelines in other words does not conform to the world look the social media stuff it's of the world it is based in the world Facebook TikTok, Snapchat, if you got rid of all of it, you know what would happen? The world would spin, the sun would come up, the birds would chime, the flowers would continue to bloom. They did before, and they will afterward. That is not God. 
The phone is not God. Social media is not God. TikTok is not God. You know what? Abby can consider herself blessed because she was persecuted for the name of Christ. And we are told that we will endure persecution for the name of Christ. You know, the boys here, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they had their most basic right violated, the right of human life. And they were brought to that fiery furnace. And right before they were pushed in there, boy, you know what they could have done? They could have said, no, king, no. Okay, please, we give up. Mercy, uncle. Right? Just don't throw us into the fire. We, we, we will bow down to your image. We will conform to your ways. We'll do whatever you say. Just save our life. Just spare us. <sighs> they didn't do that, did they? What did they do? Like a lamb being led to the slaughter, they kept their mouths shut and trusted God to spare them. They were placed in the midst of the fire without a word, without a fight, trusted God. Because at that point, there was no fight to fight. There was no reason to resist. The Babylonians were the most powerful empire in all the world. Here they were prisoners. They were under their control. There was nothing they could do. So they were placed in the fire. And you know why they were okay with that? Because God is with us. God is with us. Devise a plan, but it will be thwarted. State a proposal, but it will not stand, for God is with us. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 10. God is with us in the valley, and God is with us in the fire. Old King Nebuchadnezzar, he stood up and he looked inside that fire and he said, Hey, didn't I put three people in there? They're like, yeah, king, you sure did. Why do I see four, and why does one of them look like the son of the gods? It's because Jesus was in the fire with them. Jesus was in the midst of the fire with them, and Jesus will be in the midst of the fire with you. My dear friends, my church, listen to me. Whatever you're going through right now, or whatever God has for you on the horizon, Jesus is with you. He will be with you. He says, lo, I am with you to the end of the age. I will not leave you nor forsake you. And I want you to be comforted by that message today. And I want you to have assurance in that knowing that the God of all creation is with you and loves you. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad for your reward in heaven is great. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. My friends, trouble is the default position. You will have it if you haven't had it already. If you have, you will have more. We all will. But you know what we have? We have a God who's greater than he who is in the world. And we have a hope and a trust and a future that is planned out for us in a place called heaven. So when this world is done and it's made new again, you and I will be a part of that. And let us put our trust in the one who can make it all happen, Jesus Christ. Will you bow your heads for prayer? Father God, I want to thank you once again, Lord, for the wonderful life that you have given us and the promise of hope that you have created for us. Thank you for listening to the Sunday message by Pastor Nick Stringer at Creekside Church in Brookville, Indiana. For more information, you can go to www.creekside-church.org and find us on the website. Once again, you've been listening to the Sunday message with Pastor Nick Stringer.